The last page that's related to the shop component is my account. And here you'll be able to see your purchases and also edit account details. So let's begin. Before you can access your purchases and your account information, you need to log in, of course. So we need to treat the case where the user accesses the my account page, but is not logged in. So what we're going to do here is actually copy uh, this artboard. And we're going to create a new page called my account, paste that in, we're going to update the navigation here. So this will be a menu item special, this will be the active one. And we need to move the uh, menu indicator as well. And then uh, redo some of the um, of the spacings here. So we'll just grab these and make sure everything is aligned with the um, with our grid like that. Okay, we are good to go. Also, we'll update uh, this page header. And in the main content area, we're going to have this exact uh, login form, but without this product info card. So let's just get rid of that. And then in this page, we'll also have the option to create an account. Uh, for that, let's uh, use a tab control. Uh, let's see where we used it before. Uh, here it is. So uh, we'll actually use the same uh, tab control as we did here in the uh, theme single page. So we'll grab the section background, the tab content BG, and the actual tabs. Okay, so copy those. And here we're going to say content. This will be login content. And we're going to paste everything here, make sure we align everything properly. Okay, so these are the tabs, uh, we need to put the nav up. We need to move it up like that. Uh, the login content, we're also going to have to move it up above the tab content BG, and then uh, move it down and leave a 90 pixel distance there. Perfect. Now let's see about the actual tabs. Here, we're going to say my account. And the first link will be login. And the second one will be create account. Okie doke. And finally, the last thing here is to change this secondary login button into a primary because this is really only the uh, the only action in the page that we need right now. Let's uh, change this symbol into a BTN primary default. And that's going to say login there. But uh, we don't need it to be this big. So we can just uh, make do with a smaller button like this, for example, 150 pixels in width. So go here, um, no symbol, and then resize this to 150. And call this default secondary short. Uh, default primary short, sorry, and then create uh, another symbol. All right. Uh, finally, let's bring up this uh, navigation here, and then resize this bit. Okay, for some reason, we can't see this. That's, uh, that's really weird. Okay, let's actually delete this symbol instance. I don't know what happened there. Nav down light. Okay, that's weird. Uh, it seems somehow we've deleted uh, the actual um, arrow inside it. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it's uh, just a bug from sketch because right now it disappeared. Okay, th this is really, really weird. I don't know why sketch is doing this. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's recreate that symbol. It shouldn't be too hard. So let's uh, uh, create the nav uh, up light in here, and then remove the symbol, rotate it. Okay. And then let's uh, create a new symbol uh, with the same name, nav down light, it should uh, rewrite the old one. Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, so I guess we're gonna have to go here and 
remove the old one. This is really big. So we're going to have to resize it and then resize this bit. And we are finished. Now, since we've done this, we need to go back to every single page and uh, find that the nav down light symbol and apply the new symbol to it, which is this. Okay. And I'm going to do that on every single page here. If this didn't happen to you, then don't worry about it. Uh, but I'm going to go and change on each one and then just come back. Okay, so this is the login page, basically. But what if you want to create a new account? Well, uh, let's uh, actually rename this to my account login. And we'll duplicate it. And we'll say my account new. And on this screen, we're gonna switch things. So this will be the inactive, this will be the active, the text here is gonna say, don't have an account yet. Creating one is really simple. And we're gonna make it very simple for the user. He just needs to fill in the email and password, and he can take care of the rest later. All right. And in here, we need to change this um, form a little bit. So we're going to ask for email and password and a confirmation password. And the actual uh, input here will be a default primary. So we need a longer one this time. And for text, we're going to put create account, okay, bring this up like this, and then do all the uh, necessary modifications. And now we have our page that allows us to create an account. Now once we're logged in, the my account page will change. So let's see how that is. First thing, let's uh, duplicate this artboard. And we'll call it my account purchases. Okay, we've got to change the breadcrumbs here a little bit. Here, we'll just say welcome Adi, or welcome the username. And then inside, we're basically going to have two tabs, purchases and edit account details. And on the right here, we're going to have a logout link. And then for the content, we're going to have a uh, table very similar to the one on the cart. So we're actually going to copy that the entire table. And there we go, 90 pixels from the top. And we just need to change a couple of things. So for example, we don't need the quantity. So we'll just delete that. And let's go ahead and delete some of these uh, rows here, we don't need them. And uh, instead of the price, we're going to put support. Instead of support here, we're gonna, we're gonna put purchase date. And on this last section, it's going to be for download. Okay, so let's, uh, let's push this. And then support is going to be maybe somewhere around here. Let's get rid of these uh, buttons. And then we're going to have this little bit here, this little bit here with the support. And then on the support, we're basically going to show when the support for that theme ends. So we're going to say ends January 25th, 2016, for example. And then as an option, we can purchase one extra year. Finally, for the download, we're going to use the same text as here. It's going to say download and in parentheses, the file size, something like this. We'll uh, go ahead and align this to the right. And we'll align it with our um, table here. And that's one row, basically. Now, of course, we can uh, duplicate these. So let's create another row, and then another one. And there you have it. That's the purchases table. Now, apart from purchases, we also need to specify some things about licensing terms, and item support. This is a, a very good place to put those. And we're actually going to use uh, this text style here to create those items in two columns. So let's, uh, let's copy this. And we're going to paste it in right here, we're going to say content BG, let's uh, bring up the grid. And each one of these text fields will span three big columns. 
So here we're going to say licensing terms and the accompanying text, and then copy this and create item support information along with the accompanying text. Finally, uh, we need to create the edit account details tab. So uh, simply duplicate this artboard, call it edit account, change the tabs here. And then as for the content, uh, we don't need this table. And we don't need these. Instead, we need three sections, one for personal information, where we edit name, email and password, one for billing address, and one for uh, credit card information. And we can grab a lot of those uh, fields already from the checkout page. So uh, let's actually increase the size of this canvas, push the footer down and the navigation. And then uh, let's go into checkout. And we'll grab billing and payment method, which here, I forgot to uh, rename the group. So copy those and paste them in, position them uh, correctly, 90 pixels from the uh, tab headers there. And then uh, we're going to have the billing address here, we'll uh, simply click on each field if we want to um, change it, the payment method here will be changed to credit card, and the text will be exactly this one, minus the billing address text here, and we're going to say here's the credit card we have on file. And it seems that the actual credit card form wasn't copied. Oh, that's a separate, uh, separate one. So copy the card form, yeah, paste it in, put it under payment. And now grab both payment and billing and push them down. Then simply duplicate billing. So we can create the personal information. Alright, and here we're going to have name, email and password. Now bring the billing and pay payment back up to 120 and rename billing copy to personal information. All right, let's uh, extend this a little bit. All right. And finally, uh, we need a way to save our discard changes that we make to these fields. So for that, we're going to use a uh, floating card, very similar to the one we used on the checkout here. So since we have a lot of elements in common, let's actually copy this and paste it in here, align it properly, and then only keep the uh, the stuff we need. So we need some text that says you have made changes to the account details. And it asks us if the if we want to save those changes, let's uh, rename this card to changes. Let's uh, push this down like this. Uh, we don't need these, or these, or these, or the discount. But we do need uh, this button. And we'll actually create a short one. And we're going to say save. And then we'll go we're going to insert a BTN default secondary short that we're going to put right here. And this one is going to say discard. Now these sizes don't really work here. So we're actually going to remove the symbol here and resize this discard button so that we have enough room for it 125 to be more exact or you can do that with the primary button that's uh, really up to you and now we'll move these up to 60 and then we're going to resize this background so that we have 60 pixels of padding bottom there you go. So with this, we've actually completed uh, the my account page. So we have the case where we need to log in, then when we need to create a new account, when we want to check our purchases. And finally, when we want to edit account details. And with that, we've finished building all the shop related pages. In the next lesson, we'll have a look at the rest of them. So I'll see you there.